I repost my own personal experiences of the morning and day of September 11th, 2001 as a resident of Washington, D.C. I did not personally experience any loss or any personal danger on that day. It's simply my experiences that I'll share here. Shay Michelle. This is uh, all written, I believe, on September 11th, uh, 2002, maybe, or a group of things together. So I'll just read it straight through just as a reminder for what I'm going to write and also uh, to share it with you. A year ago this morning at 0719, 11 September 2001, I woke up with Michelle. Michelle had recently moved out of our shared apartment and into her new condo in the Chandra Levy building in deepest, darkest DuPont, Washington, D.C., U.S. Michelle felt sick. I got up, had some water, used the loo, and then left the little studio flat with our dog. I walked Susie up to P Street, grabbed Michelle some food from the convenience store, the kind of care package one collects for a friend who's under the weather. Fuck you. Oh, thank you. Welcome to Chris Cast. My name's Chris Abraham. This is season two, episode 30. I think this is the last episode of the season before I start season three. This is, uh, this episode is just my memories of 9-11 a decade later. And I'm going to read to you from a post I just put on Substack. My Substack is Chris A at sub, uh, Chris A dot Substack dot com. And, uh, I will start after the break. Thank you. Welcome back. This is Chris Cast, Season 2, Episode 30, the last episode of the season. It is September 10th, and I am going to be reading this to you from my substack, and I'm just going to read it as is. There's enough description within it that I think you could probably uh, follow along. <clears throat> my memories of 9-11, a decade later. I repost my own personal experiences of the morning and day of September 11, 2001, as a resident of Washington, D.C. I did not personally experience any loss or any personal danger on that day. It's been a decade since the morning when I was driving home from my ex-girlfriend's apartment in DuPont Circle along Massachusetts Avenue in an, in a, in an, in, in, in an interrupted diagonal across downtown Washington, D.C., only to discover via WAMU 88.5 FM that a plane had crashed into a twin tower in lower Manhattan. I need to dig deeper into the Wayback Machine because I know there are things I wrote on the day of, but this is all I have recovered so far. I tend to post it every, every year on 9-11, but I thought I would jump the gun this time and send it out to the world the afternoon before.
Shay Michelle. A year ago this morning at 0719, 11 September 2001, I woke up with Michelle, my ex-girlfriend. Michelle had recently moved out of our shared apartment and into her new condo in the Chandra Levy, the Chandra, the Chandra Levy building in deepest, darkest DuPont, Washington, D.C., U.S. In the morning, Michelle felt sick. I got up, had some water, used a loo, and then left the little studio flat with our dog, Susie. I walked her up to P Street, grabbed Michelle some food from the convenience store, the kind of care package one collects for a friend who is under the weather. As everyone knows, I always overbuy. She could have camped out in her little apartment under the covers for a week on my supplies. Driving the Jeep home on 9-11. I must have spent some time with Michelle as she was under the weather because on my drive back from Michelle's pad in DuPont, I had the windows rolled down and morning edition on the radio. It was then that I heard about the 0850 and the 0904 crashes into the World Trade Tower. First into the first into the into the first twin tower as I knew them, and then the second, respectively. Their weather was pristine in the low 80s like it is today. And as an aside, it's beautiful today in Arlington, Virginia, as I read this. And I had the windows down and the radio was on loud. I looked over to other drivers and we shared looks. The looks were not terror. They were not panic. They were not any of those things. They were not even numb, dumb looks. They were the look of incredulousness, disbelief. They were dumbfounded. There were rumors of all sorts of things at that moment. There had been no sort of anything in D.C. yet, but there were rumors that there was a bomb in the State Department. At this time, 0930, I was driving fast down Massachusetts Avenue, returning from a night sleeper with my ex-girlfriend, Michelle. I was staying there because I double-booked my apartment, and as there was a bed for Isabel and a bed for Kate, I was neither sleeping on the love seat. I am 6'3", or in the bed of a friend. I was either sleeping on the love seat, I am 6'3", or in the bed of a friend. Michelle was my friend. Michelle is my friend. Ah, so are Kate and Isa. Lincoln Park and the explosion on 9-11. I returned to the hill and was rounding Lincoln Park on 11th Street Southeast, and I heard an enormous muffled but distant blast. There were rumors on the radio that there was a bomb at the State Department. Michelle works at the State Department. I hit the gas and hustled home to Isabel, to Kate, to the television and to the phone so I could call Michelle to see if she was okay. Before the blast, I was in the Jeep, listening to Morning Edition on the radio. I was returning to my home. I had the windows down and saw everyone in the other cars with looks of disbelief in their faces. My face, to, my face must have been similar. When the day began, I ro- ro- woke up in the bed of my ex, Michelle. She had let me spend the night because I had double booked my pad and needed some place to crash. She was sick, so she didn't plan on going to work in the library of the Department of State that day. <laughs> upon arrival at the grotto on 9 11, on, upon returning to the grotto, a nickname I have for my pad. I joined Kate and Issa on the blue Ikea love seat. They were hunched over, squinting at the little Sony 19-inch TV with all their might. The room was dark. Kate told me my mom had called to tell me what was going on. When she called, Kate and Issa had turned on the TV. Neither of them watches. Only my obsessive NPR listening kept me informed as I returned from Michelle's. It was really only then did I recognize what was going on in New York City. 
It was only then, as they alternated between live news feed and the looping, looping, looping footage of the crash, crash, crash of the two planes into what I knew as the Twin Towers, but now learn were called Tower 1 and Tower 2 of the World Trade Center. I had been in New York City just about a month previous. I had been staying in Brooklyn in Anne and Ian's apartment while they were away. When they returned, I commuted into the city with Anne. She works for Moody's. Ian works for the Port Authority. Ian works for the Port Authority. She worked right next to the World Trade, World Tra- the WT Sa- Towers, and he, Ian, worked in them. He had walked from their gorgeous walk-up apartment in Brooklyn to the subway. It was only a short ride to the subway, uh, right there to the uh, from short ride in the subway right there to the World Trade Center. I walked down to her building, gave her a hug and kiss, and then headed uptown to the trains back to D.C. I wrote this first weblog entry the week before visiting Anne, Ian, Marlies, Mina, and Mark. I wrote the second weblog entry the week after. Funny that. It bears no importance that I was that I was at the Towers a little over a month ago before the terrorist event at 9-11, but I hadn't realized it. Collecting my family on 9-11. When I realized the import of what was going on, I called Michelle Nolan, my recent ex, and told her that I was jumping into the Jeep and dashing back over to DuPont so that I could collect her from her 10th floor condo, right up the street from the State Department and relatively close to the executive branch. And she lives in a studio apartment, one wall of which is glass. And she lives with our dog Susie. So although she didn't want to come at first, I sped over there anyway, to collect her, to collect them, big little errs and little little errs. There was a lot of traffic forming. There were the first signs of the military. I hustled up 13th and then made it up to Florida and cut around above the city center and after some nasty jams I made it into DuPont. And there was Miss Michelle and Miss Susie all packed up and ready to bail. I got her into the car. As I said before, she was feeling sick anyway. She was looking kind of out of it. I knew I was kind of out of it. It didn't matter. When I need to perform, I always do, thank God. As I recall, there were already hummers at some of the corners downtown, so I avoided downtown again. I tried my best to do the circuit, but as, you, but, but as I recall, I believe I took Mass Avenue mostly. When we got into the grotto, Susie, Kate, Michelle, Issa, and I felt better. And by that time, Anita was back home and her crew was starting to drink some beers. Uh, Anita is the uh, girl who lives upstairs from the grotto on the ground level. The grotto is underground. Issa had made plans to bail town to the burbs to avoid the inevitable. I was blogging and sending emails on the kitchen table. Michelle and Kate were glued to the TV, and Susie was just chilling. She's good like that. Of course, the towers fell. They fell and many people didn't get out, and there was something wrong when the rescuers need rescue. By noon, Kate and I headed over to Al's Pizza to grab some za. And then there was the plane, hijacked and apparently on its way to the White House. And then there was the report of it going down in a field in central Pennsylvania. And the day passed. Normalish. I just drove out to Target on Route 1. The car's bats were acting funny, so I went to get a charge on. So I went to Target so that I could buy a can opener and some laundry detergent and dishwashing machine liquid. 
I didn't see the damage to the Pentagon. What side was it on? Anyway, aside from a little more intensity with regards to police presence, all the roads are open and I could even travel up Independence back to the pad. It's very weird to see it heal, at least superficially, so quickly. There are roads closed off, but I don't see the National Guard or anything. Why I don't have post-traumatic stress disorder post-9-11. There is a study I heard reports. There's a story I heard reported this morning on NPR that explored the effects of post-traumatic stress disorder on New Yorkers and then on the rest of the nation. The most interesting aspect of the report was that the citizens of Greater Washington don't seem to be exhibiting any signs of PTSD. There were a few theories, but I believe I know why from my experience living in the district for the last 14 years. I was listening to NPR this morning while prepping for work, and I heard a news story that discussed the following. Doctors expected to see high rates of post-traumatic stress disorder in the months following the September 11th attacks, but a new study shows that while stress disorders have risen for those living in the New York City area, national levels haven't changed much. NPR's Joseph Shapiro reports. Apparently, Washington, D.C. is the least affected by PTSD in the entire nation, despite our obvious vulnerability and the unpopularity of the current administration abroad. Why is this? Well, I think I know the answer. It's in me. When I arrived in D.C. in 1988 to become a freshman at GW, I didn't think about much at all. Over time, it began to become apparent to me, especially in Cold War America, that Washington, D.C. was, in fact, nuclear ground zero. The truth of our impending doom, the actualized nature of self-resulting, was certainly something that I had to struggle with. But that was a long time ago. I was more than done with my resignation to nu nuclear annihilation by, the by 1991 when I had left D.C. to study in the U.K. and then had to decide if I wanted to come back. Of course I did. And of course I did. And I am still here. But I was not surprised at all by what happened on September 2001. In fact, I was grateful that it wasn't worse. I was grateful and still am that there hasn't been a follow-up that the Pentagon was the only successful target in the area, and that the attack was conventional. I think that the reason why so many people don't like Washington and don't like Washingtonians is that we are a little hardened. We are in a lot of ways war-weary, and we have seen a hell of a lot worse than this, by and large. In the article cited, cited on NPR, it was suggested that the number of people in the business had a lot to do with our insouciance regarding 9-11. Why, yes, in so many ways. We are certainly in denial about a lot of things. Certainly dating in the opposite sex and how to meet Mr. How to meet Mr. and Mrs. Wright. But there are a few things we understand. We understand that there are... that we are a certain target, and that we have known this from the days of the Cold War, when the little kiosk at the center of the Pentagon Courtyard was known as Ground Zero, ironically. We understand that we are the soldiers, we are the Secret Service, we are the military, we are the spies, and we are the State Department. We are the consultants, we are the foreign aid consultants, we are the specialists, we are the travelers, and we are the diplomats. There is quite a weight, a dignity, a seriousness, and a professionalism in Washington that cannot really be replicated anywhere else. We have seen worse, we have seen worse. I can conceive of much, much worse. So instead of becoming even remotely scared by the events of 9-11, I returned to much of what I had learned when I was a younger man. We Washingtonians are a juicy target for obvious reasons, and anything less than thermonuclear war in a scorched earth is a blessing that I am quite grateful for. I have chosen to live here, and despite what anyone believes to the contrary, we are brothers in arms with New York City. Instead of sisters in this instance, B 
because in many ways we have always been co-icons for everything that America represents, to the Soviet Union in 1988 and to the axis of evil in 2002. I think that maybe we thought about it. I think that maybe we thought about it more. I think we could think about it more. I think we can think about it more. I think that by being less pretty and glamorous than New York in general, we had more time to come to terms with the pros and cons of living, breathing, breeding, loving, and thriving in a Rome of sorts. Someday, and I hope this will never happen, Rome will burn. Will I run to the hills as a direct result? No. Will I get married and have a couple of kids? Hell yes. Do I have hope that we will be able to weather this international storm and skate? I am sorry, but to be honest, I am prepared to need to lash myself to the mast, but I am quite certain we will never sink. And that is why I believe in my city, Washington, D.C. That is why I believe my city, Washington, D.C., and I are not suffering undue stress, po stress post 9-11 and that the New Yorkers are a neurotic mess by default. We might be dull and unfashionable here in the nation's cap capital, but we're also not remotely as nuts. Joke. Hey there. I know that was stilted. I know it wasn't the best reading. And I didn't redo anything, and I think my recorder fell over and startled all y'all uh, in the middle of it. But I'm just going to go ahead and call it quits. My name's Chris Abraham. This is Chris Cast. It's at anchor.fm slash Chris Abraham. I've updated the name to Chris Cast from Chris Abraham or Chris Cast with Chris Abraham or Chris Cast by Chris Abraham or something. And you can find it there, and you can find me at chrisabraham.com. You can email me at chris at abraham.su. You can text me at plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one. 352 If you try to call me, I will not answer unless I know who it is. If you want to make a date to talk on the phone, I'm at calendly.com slash chrisabraham. And what else? That's it. I'm at Chris Abraham on Twitter, at Chris Abraham on Facebook, at Chris Abraham on YouTube. I'm at uh, Abraham Chris J, or Christopher Abraham Christopher J, Christopher J Abraham on TikTok. I'm uh, Abraham CJ on Snapchat. I am all those things. So I hope you enjoy and I'll talk to you soon. Starting next episode will be season three. So mahalo. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Um, y uh, hasta la próxima. Ciao. <coughs>